Thank you for coming once again. Hello. Let me tell you, like everybody else, uh, for you to join our community. And today we are going to tell you about the subject of vulnerabilities because of errors in the business logic. But let's uh, get acquainted. I am Xenia. I work in our vision. I am a system analyst. A bit strange, maybe, but I want to tell you that I have an uh, IT security roots. I was linked to that area for all my career. I am Ilya Sharov. I am head of security de secure development area in the company. We started from scratch, we dealt with uh, system integration, and I'm going to complement uh, Xenia's ideas. A few words about this subject. First of all, if you look at the trends, vulnerabilities because of errors in the business logic grow in numbers. And I'm a system analyst, and it's it was interesting for me to realize how uh, I can affect that area. Ilya helped me to answer this question. Let's start with theory. What is business logic? Uh, there are different question, uh, different answers, but in general, business logic ensures executions of the tasks which were envisaged when the application was developed. It's the functionality that we use, that we need, and the cases that we face. Something which makes the customer use our application. Vulnerabilities of business logic are related to um, drawbacks in design, implementation uh, of the application which help an intruder to interact with the application uh, through uh, unexpected routes. Well, at this design level, we can use some unpredictable scenarios when you do a, uh, script analysis. Uh, we discuss positive scenarios, what we have to get from the function. But in the process of development, we get errors because bugs tend to happen. Uh, business logic is just errors in the logic itself. Yes, in the, they can be different. It's difficult to find them, especially in an automatic way and um, uh, they uh, are disclosed when the legitimate functionality is exploited in an unusual way. People who test security can say that this is a typical functionality of Avastop 10 IP. The ratings which uh, detect most critical vulnerability, manipulation of authentication, manipulation of logic, direct ad uh, address to a certain functionality, exploitation of business limitations, uh, denial of service. Uh, everybody knows what is uh, denial of service. But what about denial of service for the business scenario? Your system continues working, but your call center or situation center cannot do the job. Let us discuss case one. Case one is broken to a fame. We have a usual web application, a standard one. We want to protect it uh, so that the user two-factor authentication, not only login and uh, password, but something else. If it's correct, then a person is logged in. Everything is good. What can be wrong here? Unfortunately, 
developers uh, didn't realize that we can uh, try to find not only the login and password, but brutal attack. Uh, the second code, the second factor can also be brutally attacked. And there are no limitations for that. The second case is capture. So we take a web application to protect against uh, password attack. We introduce capture. And when you get, try to get into your cabinet, login, password, three attempts, and then a picture, capture. Unfortunately, developers didn't think that you can address directly to API and bypass capture. You work in your browser, but um, the intruder doesn't always work through a browser. And the third case, and this, uh, truly we have quite a lot of cases, much more cases than three. Uh, it's lack of limitations for user uh, entry fields. When you build an online shop, uh, the developer didn't take into account the uh, the limitations about the number of uh, goods. So he, uh, so the quantity could be negative, and as a result, uh, the cute person added some negative products, and it was uh, deleted from. Uh, the receipt. Well, in the last three years, we found such cases. It's uh, the third case is rather old, actually, uh, but this vulnerability still exists, and we find it from time to time. Please raise your hand who found such vulnerabilities. Who tried to fix them? So, of course, those who faced are outnumbered, those who tried to fix. Now, the most difficult part of the presentation is how, to, what shall we do? But first, some deviation, lyrical deviation. Let me tell you about my job as an analyst. I analyze the requirements. It includes uh, uh, analysis of functional and non-functional re requirements. Functional requirements, what kind of functions and features should be present or should not be present in the product. It's important because uh, developers, as a result, realize what is required from them. Non-functional ones describe how the system should behave. Performance, quality, attributes, and security, which is often forgotten. Non-functional requirements are also important, but unlike the functional ones, the system can support all functions and features, but in the non-functional case, it works, but it can work slowly or with bad quality, it, but it does the job. Non-functional qualities help us generate high-quality software. Let's have a look at what we shall do. Here you see the classical stages of development. Initiation, design, code analysis, security testing, and support. Uh, initiation. You can invite 
the people, uh, stakeholders, analysts, security people, testers, and apart from sheer functionality, you can look at the application from a different side. What if we do it differently? Then we analyze requirements, what Xenia does. Here we can be supported by architects and analysts. Uh, apart from functional requirements, she uh, presents non-functional requirements as well. Then implementation that is clear, quality control. It so happens that uh, develop, development accelerates, we want everything to be faster and faster, but if we look at such stages as quality insurance and quality control, we forget that initially uh, we have a functionality of testing. I'm not showed, I did show here usual testers, security testers, other kind of testers, but at the control quality stage, your best helper is analyst, a tester, who not just tests functionality, but can do negative testing. Uh, some border cases can be tested here. And then support uh, bug bounty, pen test, depending on the maturity level. As Ilya said, we want to start from something and that is threat modeling, building a model of threats. And then you can see what kind of problems we must face, we can face, uh, what could be the weak points in our application, so that we pay attention to those areas as early as possible. Threat modeling, it's a difficult subject. Uh, we always discuss it, uh, different forums. Uh, so look at the last year's publications. Some of them are quite interesting. You have a lot of methodologies, Stride, Red, Pasta, Lin Dan, FSTEC, but each of them is focused on a certain set of requirements. Uh, to fill in the model, we have banks, uh, OWASP, uh, top 25 errors, and others that you can see. Of course, when you develop a threat model, uh, you have to involve developers. Please don't do it in the vacuum, because uh, it will be incomplete or just useless, because the systems are so complex now that you cannot do it on your own. What do we have to start when dealing th thread models? Uh, you have to look at your system in general and realize what kind of data goes where, what kind of processes, what kind of trust borders you have. And you can see here some of the tools that may help. You may do it without tools, but if you have a good tool, uh, of course, it makes the whole process process fast and convenient. I told you about the case uh, with two-factor authentication. Let's go back to that case. And this is the uh, flow of data, which can help you a lot. We have a user. It's a basic case. A user, a web application. Um, you have to exchange some data, authorization by 
password. If it's OK, then we show him the second page, second factor. And if it is correct, then the user is allowed entry into his personal cabinet. But we don't see any threats here. If we go into detail, then it will be much more complex. It's uh, not easy to analyze, but everything is clear. You have a user who, through a browser, goes to the web uh, application. He is redirected to the authorization server, which checks the login and password, uh, sends the second form to the second server, uh, which all also sends a request that the user has to send a code. If the code is correct, then everything is all right. Uh, you are authorized, you have the access rights. Here we have something that we didn't see before. Uh, we have two servers, the authorization server and the two-factor authorization server is not one server. So the analyst, the architect uh, could be very useful here. We can see the whole architecture much better than before. And you can find uh, weak points here. If we use an application which was developed specifically for that purpose, your job is facilitated greatly. What about risk mitigation strategy? You know that uh, uh, mitigation, acceptance, uh, denial. OK, but what do we have in practice? If you find a vulnerability uh, and the team says business accepts the risk. No, business accepts the risks when the cost of risk mitigation is higher than the risk impact and business should uh, take the risk being well aware of what it means then mitigation. Uh, this is most popular. Of course, we can eliminate uh, vulnerabilities, but uh, we can mitigate risks. Uh, when we do that, when the cost of uh, mitigation is lower than possible impact, then outsourcing, insurance is also used, so the risk is pushed to somebody else. And elimination is that the vulnerable function should be cancelled. Everything is simple. So four main strategies. Non-functional requirements are also important, and uh, we're going to tell it uh, to you again and again. When you need this functionality, uh, it means that the company uh, has to get a function which is useful, which brings in the money, but they don't see 10,000 of lines of code. Each of them may contain errors and vulnerabilities. It means that we have to um, interact so that security people uh, wouldn't uh, clean all the garbage after developers. You must work together as one team. Startups. What kind of startups are you talking about? But uh, in the recent years, even large enterprises build uh, internal departments which work in accordance with the startup rules um, to facilitate documentation, to eliminate red tape. Let's look at the case. We take a certain application, develop it, insert appropriate functionality, but we do not uh, involve specialists. What kind of specialists? 
if we don't involve uh, advertising specialists, financial specialists, architecture specialists, security specialists, you will face a problem that the, your application is not going to meet the requirements. Which specialist is missing, that uh, kind of requirements will not be met. As a result, bad reputation, uh, bad competition, uh, lost income, and so on. So we didn't invite a security specialist, and then a certain Johnny comes to you, he looks fine, he goes to production and he is happy. Positive Technologies says that uh, if you know uh, vulnerability uh, with exploit, it will take Johnny 45 minutes to break through. Please don't help Johnny. To do that, when the application is almost ready, when it is tested, we interact with developers to generate test cases for a certain feature which is vulnerable. If uh, it's related to API, then we have to realize what may go wrong because we have a diagram of data flows and testers are going to check if the developers missed something or if they missed certain requirements and then they correct the error what is uh, how classical testing is different from uh, vulnerability uh, testing <clears throat> We look at documentation, we plan uh, our work, we use the test cases and we ask the developers to demonstrate the product. You know all the features, you know your product, it's your product, please demonstrate. We also uh, look at the documentation and the previous cases in order not to do double work. Uh, uh, the most difficult cases are regarded at this level. When we talk to the teams, we, uh, we have a stage-by-stage -stage algorithm of risk elimination. Uh, so we have a bug, we have a feature, we have a vulnerability. Three different things. So we are talking about how everything is simple, but unfortunately it's only in the imagination. But in real life, if we introduce threat modeling and secure development, you will have a lot of uh, submerged stones. Uh, when I took a diagram and showed it to you, uh, it was a simple feature. But if you take a product which is 10 years long, how can we show a diagram? Because in 10 years you have a lot of things there. Then the time and the resources of developers are limited. And if we add more work, so without certain motivation, it wouldn't do. It's very difficult to motivate motivate people uh, and do additional work without understanding why. But if there is, uh, there is motivation, it may so happen that the developers consist, uh, the developer team is numerous and it takes a month or two to bring them all together. They all have job to do. Uh, they have their individual personal calendars, and it's difficult to put them all together. With legacy, you don't have to describe it in full. You can describe uh, 
uh, certain processes start with certain things, uh, then what about the search of a driver? You, you have to find a person who, is, who also wants to do the job. It's very good when uh, you have a driver on top of the company, you need support, and anyway, you will need support at all levels of the company. Then a few words about motivation. Let me tell you about my personal experience, changes of uh, security practices. You, you have to start with yourself. You have to open yourself to the developers. You shouldn't be a person who prohibits everything. You have to be flexible, you have to be open, you have to tell them why we do this and that, and don't try to change the classical development tools of the company. No, no, no. I also want to add a few words. First of all, with business, you have to talk to in the business language, talking about risks. If we don't realize how much a business may lose in money terms, uh, sometimes it may so happen that the risk can bring about very low impact, but its elimination will take much more. Sometimes uh, a bicycle costs a thousand, but the lock of that bicycle costs three thousand. This is wrong. Uh, talking to team leaders and product owners, uh, we focus on a real demonstration of risks. Uh, sometimes the team says that this cannot happen and we show and we don't have it in production but we show them that it takes place that we can do this and we can do that and it may happen in production and they are all shocked and of course that changes their attitude not only security people are focused on that there are people from other departments testers and analysts architects as well and we have to find common points of interest in your company yes also uh, what do we have to start with start from small things if we uh, develop a simple template for an analyst, for him to see what can affect security, what cannot affect security. Mm. Uh, um, thus, we can select the areas that we can use later for later communications. For example, now we have uh, new kinds of fines uh, for breach of personal data. And we can start from services that work with personal data. We must understand where personal data goes and um, control and manage the vulnerabilities that may occur in future. Uh, responsibility is another important area. Responsibility for the product uh, is laid on security people. So, but actually everybody is responsible. Let's take a home, a house. Each person, uh, of course, there are full stack developer who can do everything, but the quality will be different. Of course, one people can build a home all for himself, and the developer can also develop and test everything. But is he going to build a good product? No. Each of us can build a house, but actually you need an architect, a tester, a technologist, and a, a specialist. 
So you need a high professional team. Then the product will be much better. But if you don't control the team, you can get something different at the end, different from what you expected. High quality, good, but different. Now let's uh, make a conclusion. There are um, security champions, Usually it's a developer, but uh, we have architects, we have technologists who are good professionals and they can help us quite a lot. Therefore, we have to define functional requirements, non-functional requirements, describe the architecture, have uh, sufficient documentation. It should exist, it should describe the main functional modules. You have to test security, negative testing, border testing. And another important thing is understanding of the product developed. Because sometimes when you start looking at the team, uh, they say, well, and we don't know how it works, but it works. So please evaluate the presentation. We tried to do our best. And finally, let me tell you that only by joint efforts you can make your application more secure. Thank you for attention. Questions, please. Hi, thank you for your presentation. You told us a lot about business logic. Let's add business logic. But it seems uh, you didn't say about integration at all. We have a lot of micro services. How do you find a problem when you have two groups of microservices, two domains, and they are not well coordinated between each other? For example, in one group of microservices, one domain is accepted in one way, in the other it is accepted by another way, and the vulnerability is in between these domains. I got your question, of course, when we test, when we do the testing. We tested one information system, we didn't see any bugs, then the second system, we didn't have a bug, but there is a team who tests the entire functionality, and at this level we can find it. And if there is no end-to-end -end between those services, because the experts do not expect any problems here. Because when we run a user scenario, it looks as if we can find that problem. But if we um, didn't even realize that there might happen something here. Well, it's hard to say there. It's a good question. Thank you. We are trying to find an answer to this question. Hi. Thank you for the presentation, which was very good. Let me specify. Uh, it's the time of uh, very loud vulnerabilities. WordPress, for instance, uh, with vulnerabilities. Uh, it's a simple question. What? should a gigantic company do when QNAP, WinWare, and something does? When in the business logic of application, uh, what uh, shall a big enterprise do uh, without waiting for an ex, uh, emergency patch? How can change inside the company their behavior for the future to eliminate such vulnerability. Are you talking about zero day? Yes, zero day as well, thanks to Google. Back to risk management strategy, acceptance, mitigation, elimination, uh, as I told you. If a patch is about to be ready, then uh, we can uh, insert certain rules uh, 
and it depends on the level of the company it can try uh, well it's very difficult to affect foreign companies but before we interacted at different internal forums well that's clear thank you hi thank you the question is to Xenia uh, I understood your example with a blue button, even the red button, if you like, and we don't have to um, make threat modeling. But when do, when are we going to do that? Uh, when do we have to start? Uh, well, thank you. Actually. I think uh, it's a situation-dependent thing. For each company, it may be different. Uh, this is an example. I worked in a company which uh, processed medical data and give them. For those two companies, uh, the border was quite different. If you take medical data, we have sensitive data which shouldn't go anywhere. When we talk about a game, if anything goes wrong, it's not critical at all. So it depends on the application, what it actually does, and the risks that we want to eliminate altogether. People from OPSEC, security people, can uh, define large areas and give the checklist to the developers for them to understand that this feature, if it is related to such functionality, so they have to, have to be double careful. If not, then it may they may be more relaxed. Let me add, besides, you have to define criteria you cannot start modeling at once for all the information system. You have to define criteria first. For example, they uh, are allowed to have access to internet or they have to process financial transactions. In each company, that list will be unique. And then you have to describe the whole system and the specific modules. Don't start from any point, but start from the general approach, the most critical thing, and then go back and go down into detail. Yes, thanks for the presentation. At the, one of the first slides, you showed us a classification of uh, vulnerabilities, two categories, those that can be found by automatic tools, that is clear, we check and disclose them. Then exploitation of business limitation and bypassing of business scenarios. It's not quite clear. Do we have to check all business scenarios? Uh, some business scenarios can contain uh, logical errors um, which cannot be easily detected. For example, data copying from uh, a simple example, uh, a business method can only copy data from personal data from a certain table and upload it uh, somewhere and and you cannot see whether it's it going to the mm, externally faced so copying is there copying there then write and uh, read functions can you give us an example not uh, two-factor authentication, but something different. Without uh, naming organizations, uh, what did you manage to find? One of the examples was in the report uh, about business scenario. We take a large retailer uh, with B2B interactions in the logic uh, 
denial of service. One user cannot send millions of requests. Uh, the operator couldn't process a million uh, requests. Yes, thank you. So, how nice it is, you have so many questions. I have two questions. You had a very interesting presentation, uh, vulnerabilities in business logic. Uh, testing of business logic uh, is used when we know what is going to happen. What about business logic, which is not going on in accordance with a scenario? And the second question. Uh, we had an example in slide two. And the intruder entered negative number of uh, uh, goods. It was an interesting example, but uh, I'll start with the first question, or better with the second one. They are closely related. When we describe requirements, functional requirements, we analysts describe the way the system should behave and the way it should not behave. The testers realize that the user should do one, two, three, and if it does one, a one, three, two, this is wrong. So, uh, are there any scenarios which should not be present in the application? Of course, if we are talking about large companies, when analysts do that exactly, mm, small companies just talk to the developer, we need this and that, without going into details, without any limitations, what kind of fields should be there, are there a limitation with the fields, do we need only figures there, do we need characters there? positive, negative, all that should be described as a negative number of products. Depending on the implementation uh, uh, and depending on the check, uh, so uh, checking at the customer side uh, was very popular from 2015, especially in the movies. Sometimes uh, people uh, booked the entire uh, cinema shop for a cinema hall for itself. But uh, users should not test it. It should be testing should be done before the application goes to the user. Hi, thanks for an interesting presentation. In one of the slides, uh, you talked about startups. It's a popular subject. Instead of developing something in a good way, uh, companies create a product in a start as in a startup way. You described the process very well. But you are talking about full-scale product. What about MVP? Because in the previous cases, we talk, heard a lot that we have to talk to business. I understand business. We are talking about vulnerability of business logic. But business doesn't want the logic itself. Business just wants to test it, whether it can be popular or not. Uh, business wants to test that product in the market. What can we do in this case? So we can create a separate security zone. Uh, you can develop a product uh, and 
You can close it, you can protect it with certain security tools. If you protect your budget, if you protect your HR, no one will give you a special person because uh, you will have to find an interesting employee from that department who can eliminate the most obvious vulnerabilities and errors. Go to quality assurance and control and try, uh, do the negative testing. Not just uh, demonstrate a function, but if you do something else with that feature, it may be eliminated at NVP level. So we delegate security function to developer, to security champion in the development team, architect, analyst, tester, good people. We pay attention to them, interact with them. Yes, uh, I personally have a department and which tries to share knowledge with everyone who is interested. Uh, we have certain uh, meetings when we tell about vulnerabilities and how to uh, eliminate them. At, at the end, uh, we have an internal CTF and no matter how strange, it was system analysts uh, occupied top three places. Uh -huh. Thank you, thank you. So security champion is not a person who is responsible for all the bugs. It could be the point of generation and accumulation or aggregation of all everything related to security. Or you may be a security champion in your own zone of responsibility. You understand the logic and then test it if necessary. Hi. Back to your slide when you talked about risk mitigation. Talking about mitigation, what kind of two pieces of advice you can offer? One for legacy, 10-year-old legacy application, and the other for uh, an internal enterprise startup. Second, why to eliminate uh, it should be um, logical, it should be feasible. If the information system is not externally faced, if, it's, if uh, there is no external interaction, so the priority will be low. As for the legacy, you can split it into microservices. Everything is doing it. If transformation is going on, so uh, then it depends on what kind of uh, vulnerability is there. Uh, maybe we can rewrite uh, a piece of code or apply something on top. But you have to find it, put it in the backlog so that developers know about it and can do something about it. If they don't know anything about it, they can do anything. They cannot fix it if they don't know about it. It takes uh, their resource. Elimination can take some time and have to take it into account. We don't have any more time. Last question. Last question, please. If you have more questions, you can ask them uh, after this meeting out there. We're going out and please find us there. Hi, again, thanks for the presentation. You talked about uh, data flows and interaction flows. Let's imagine a big application which has been working for a long time, is continuously updated. And if I come to company and say, uh, describe it, they will ask me, what are you going to describe? Are there any life hacks how to describe the flow? Of course, yes, we need it. 
It's easier to build the attack maps, but what do we have to start with? Let's go back to the applications I talked about. If you look at them more attentively, some of them help you to find something in an automatic way. Uh, if you don't want to uh, draw a picture with your own hand, you can use uh, such programs, uh, how to work with Git faster. No, for example, please, please find an application, a useful application, a convenient application, which will meet your requirements in this area. If you want to start something with something, uh, start with the most critical thing. For example, personal data. Uh, we must protect personal data. So start with personal data. Uh, so fix a target choose an application and implement it. Let me add, apart from finding an application, uh, find the main modules in that application. If the team says everything is main, this is wrong. Please choose the right modules, detect the main data flows and gradually build up your presentation. Who is going to test the flows? I'm sorry, we don't have any more time.